Hello, and welcome to the arbitration conversation. So in this arbitration, conversation, we're going to explore further young voices, young arbitrators in Latin America. And that's exactly what we want to do at arbitrate.com. We want to showcase all the exciting and interesting voices that are part of the conversation when it comes to arbitration. So with us today, we have a leading arbitrator in Latin America. We have Adriana Bamonde Marcano. Adriana is an international arbitrator and she graduated from the University of Montavia and holds a degree as a specialist in corporate law from Universidad Metropolitana and a master's in foreign trade from Universidad Carlos Trece de Madrid. So it's really wonderful to have you. Um, you have many other attributes and you've mediated and arbitrated over 150 cases at your young age, which is wonderful. Also, I'm happy to say that she is also involved in a collaboration with the University of Missouri Center for the Study of Dispute Resolution in education around dispute resolution. So first of all, just I know you're busy and um, I really appreciate your taking time on this with me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, this will be fun. So let's get right to it. Um, what we really want to talk about is sort of the status of arbitration for young arbitrators in Latin America. As I said, you're in Venezuela and um, have been throughout on Latin America and even Spain. So could you tell us what is the status of arbitration there? In the case of Latin America, we cannot generalize uh, just a single status because it varies a lot from country to country. Uh, but there is a huge effort in order to promote arbitral court culture. Of course, there are many factors that intervene in uh, building a strong arbitral culture, but uh, there is, of course, um, promoting the use of the model law from UNCITRAL. Most of the countries have an arbitration act. Some have a dual system. They have an international arbitration act and a national arbitration act. So that, that gives us a huge spectrum of, of what actually arbitration is for Latin America. It's growing. Of course, when you have uh, younger countries, uh, you have a lot of investment and investment naturally comes with trade, commerce, and of course, arbitration. 100%, that makes sense. And definitely, I know um, that it's different in each of the countries of Latin America. As you know, at least the UNCI trial rules have created some sort of semblance or movement toward uniformity, but I guess, the big question then becomes for many and, and many students out there who are watching this podcast thinking, what opportunities are there for me? So what opportunities would you say are there for younger arbitrators, younger students graduating and hoping to get into arbitration in Latin America? When we have uh, so many different uh, countries and so many different arbitral cultures, well, uh, and there are young and growing arbitral cultures, we cannot, most of uh, people that dedicate themselves to arbitration don't do it exclusively. Probably they have a private practice in um, court and part of their practice in litigation is arbitration. So they, they have two roles uh, as in other countries, you can uh, only dedicate yourself uh, as I try to do as an arbitrator, you know, full my 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 full time to it, but opportunities are uh, rising, and there are a lot because there are not a lot of initiatives in the ac academic field. There are more postgraduate degrees uh, in um, the bachelor of most universities all around Latin America are including uh adr and arbitration courses so now our young lawyers already know what to face and uh, courts are not the only way to solve uh disputes so there is a lot of promotion and i think is a huge contribution uh the mood competitions you know when you get to be a part of a real arbitration, when you get to be in front of real arbitrators, is the best school possible at such a very young age. So I think is a great opportunity. And of course, all the under 40 group, 
groups. When you have young practitioners group, when you give them the opportunity to build things, to make actual investigations, to build reports about the status of uh, regional arbitration, uh, when you get to be involved in guidelines like the IBA um, for the uniformity of arbitration, international arbitration, you are actually building great uh, future lawyers. So I think, and of course a networking opportunity. Uh, so I think uh, opportunities are rising. Right now I am a director of the Latin American International Arbitration Young Practitioners Group, uh, which is a wider group because we have, um, Every country has a very young practitioners group, but this one tries to enclose all of the Latin American groups. So I think it's a great opportunity. And, and those are mainly for me, uh, the, the, the opportunities there are for young uh, arbitrators and for young lawyers that want to dedicate their lives to ADR and arbitration. Oh, absolutely, 100%. I mean, as you're talking, I get, inspiration because I even think about um, our own LLM program in dispute resolution. We have many students from Latin America who are then expanding their education to get an LLM in dispute resolution, just showing that dedication to arbitration and mediation, um, which is really exciting. And, and as we all know, most disputes never go to litigation. <laughs> they actually go to mediation and arbitration in the real world. Um, so this is really great. Um, another thing you mentioned was the moot competitions. And just recently, in fact, I interviewed Ron Brand, who you may know, he was one of the sort of founders of the Viz Moot. Is the Viz Moot also something in Latin America that you run into as a young um, student of dispute resolution? Yes, and it's huge. It's really, really important. In Venezuela, all the universities are just uh, they set alerts, you know, to to get uh, involved with it. Uh, we have great coaches that have dedicated. Uh, there is a lot of continuity. I mean, uh, students that have already been are really involved with uh, getting new students interested in the, in the subject and preparing them. Really strong teams. So it, it's, it's, it's actually a beautiful activity. Um, when I was uh, head um, of director of the Arbitration Center of the Chamber of Commerce here in Caracas, we had our own national competition. It's, it was my favorite activity to mm -hmm. see them grow, to see coming back year after year stronger and more interested. So it pushes us as I am sure it pushes as such a huge uh, competition as the base mood in uh, to to be better to be mm -hmm. to 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 challenge us with brief rated cases for them. So I think that is a, a wonderful opportunity for for young lawyers. Yeah, yeah. I hope anyone watching um, just gets involved and that schools throughout the world continue to support the Viz mood, especially in tough budget times. I hope that that stays at the top of their list. Um, which actually brings me to my next question. You know, what are the the hurdles? You know, what 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 are the struggles um, to grow in this field? Definitely, there are a lot of challenges um, to get involved in a still growing uh, field. Um, it brings a lot of opportunities, but also there they have to be picked very wisely. Uh, in order to have a uh, real success. So um, there are a lot of challenges about the question in how do I build a career in arbitration? What, what is my first step? Uh, because you can develop an interest at a very young age, but maybe you don't get to work at a law firm that has that department or um, in the, at the university or to come across the opportunity to work at institutions like, like JAMS or ICDR or, or, or any other internationally. So there are definitely challenges, but there are also all of the opportunities you already talked, there are laying right there for you to you know come out and 
and show all your worth as, as a lawyer interested in the field. I think the, the remote work has helped us in some way to be more visible. Uh, thank God for social network networks and for social media in order to put us out there um, to, to make us more visible to the world by staying at home. So, so it's, it is a great opportunity and it comes with a greater opportunity. We have a generation that right now is so familiar with technology and arbitration is growing, expanding. And we're talking about IT, we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're talking about blockchain, uh, ODR is changing even the way that we got to meet it uh, at the very beginning. So those fields are a, a great opportunity right now for all the young arbitrators, so, arbitrators and young lawyers. Uh, so I believe there, there's always an opportunity in the rise. We just have to have a really great eye to spot it before. Oh, yeah. Well, you're speaking my language, as you probably know, <laughs> in terms of OR and ODR, um, which I've, of course, been talking about for over 15 years. So um, here it is. And I do, I agree that I think for young um, dispute resolution practitioners, um, students, thinking about technology and how it's disrupting the way, resolve, the way we resolve disputes will put you ahead, ahead of the curve. So I'm really happy that you're ahead of the curve. And um, thank you so much for taking time with us. This has been a wonderful arbitration conversation. Yes, it has, Amy. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Have a great day. So you.